This is not the usual introduction, and there is a reason for that. And part of me says it's entirely self-inflicted. The other part of me says technology to blame. The other part of me says I need to embrace it. And the episode number is not wrong. This is going to be episode 21. And that is because episodes 19 and 20 are literally unwatchable. Now, I record well ahead of when I edit. This is episode 21. I have recorded up to episode 33. So it's season five, episode 33. And right now, this is the end of season three. So I'm literally a season and a half ahead in the game of where we are now in editing. There's a reason for that. I've started to travel a little bit more. I'm trying to get back to a regular schedule or I'm posting three days a week and having episodes ready to go uh, is good for that. I tend to do most of my editing on the weekends when I have the free time. Um, the exception is a week like this week where I just got back from vacation and I'm trying to play catch up because I wasn't able to get caught up before I went on vacation because of work, if that makes sense. One of the things that happened is I'm always looking for ways to try and make things better, to try and improve the workflow. OBS has a Remux option that will allow you to Remux the video on the fly. And I enabled that for 19 and 20. And the end result is unwatchable. The video jumps, the audio jumps. I've literally spent the best part of two days trying to go back and fix it. Now, I use DaVinci Resolve. I've spent freaking... 12 hours online. And I was up till four in the morning last night trying to get this fixed. And I just can't. Now, this isn't my job. It's a hobby. But as with all hobbies, you want to do a really good job with it. And when you fall short, I'm not just disappointing those few of you who still watch. I'm disappointing myself more than anything else. And I am really, really kind of hacked off about that. This was one of those cases where I should have left well enough alone. I record an OBS, an MKV. I use a program to remux it to MP4. I do my editing in Resolve. I export, and we're done. And I tried to save myself 20 minutes of remux time because I tend to remux all my video, all, all, all videos in a season at once. And that's anywhere from half hour to an hour of processing time on a, on a, computer that can easily handle it. I mean, I can easily be doing that and playing a bunch of other stuff, including some very CPU intensive stuff and nothing happens, but it's my own fault. And I have no one but myself to blame for it. I tried shaving off an hour's worth of time and I ended up ruining two whole episodes and they were really good episodes. So um, this episode is going to be episode 21. It'll be the end of the season recap. And then this will probably be the only upload for this week. I will try and get the upload out for Friday, which I think I can do. It's just, I got a couple other things behind the scenes I have to take care of first. So I apologize for that. It's been a while since I've had a major issue like that. And I'm hoping it doesn't happen again. But at the end of the day, I'm also human. So we will have to wait and see what happens. So that said, let's get to episode 21. We're at the end of the season. We've won the league. We've clinched first place by six points. We're in the Champions League next year. Um, our overall balance, we're just slightly in the red. Not a lot, just a little. Vodich leads us with 26 goals. We have Avaz has a 7.47 rating and the most assists. I believe he actually got a bonus for 15 plus assists. He also has seven players of the match awards. Masevsky has nine yellow cards, and Andonovsky has a one red card. Our budget for next season, 34000 on the payroll, 113000 in the transfer budget. But because we're only spending 14000 in the payroll right now, I can adjust the heck out of that. As a matter of fact, I'm almost positive. If I go here and I want to make the budget adjustment, I mean, we can go up just a bit over a million. And I can get 600000 if I leave it at 24000 for the payroll. And that's 10000 more than we're paying now. That said, I don't expect us to, to spend all of that. 
Um, I did ask the board again to see if they would improve the training facilities. I don't know that that's going to go through just simply because of the financial um, situation we're in. That's the one thing I'm kind of worried about is that at some point, I would very much like for us to keep our facilities and that on the up and up. So how did we get here? Well, it was actually a pretty fun trip. We had one really good win and one acceptable loss. So after beating Skopje, we beat TechFest 3-1, uh, Masevsky a goal, Maradi a goal, uh, Televsky had an own goal in the 92nd minute for TechFest, and then against Bregel Nico, we absolutely thumped them 5-1, Maradi a goal, Nikolov a goal. Actually, Nikolov has a brace of goals, Velkovsky had a brace of goals. Against Skopje, we beat them 4-1, Vodic had a goal, Maradi had a brace of goals, Elisi had a goal. Against Struga, that was a 4-0 game. Masevsky had a goal, Maradi had a goal, Velkovsky had a goal, and uh, Lizzi had a goal. And then against Silex, who were the 8th team in the division, we absolutely thumped them to nil. I just I couldn't believe what I was watching. You know, I barely touched the mouse, if at all. And even then, that was only to make the substitutes that we made. I mean, everybody was 7.3 or better. I had two players on a 10 and one player on a 9, for crying out loud. Olevsky had a hat trick's worth of goals. My 16-year-old winger had a hat trick's worth of goals. Marathi had a hat trick's worth of goals. Nikolov had a goal. Abaz had a goal and an assist. Grosinowski came on, had a goal in the 92nd minute. They had a player sent off in the 29th minute. Kristovic got double yellowed in the space of three minutes. And things just went really downhill from there. We had 30 shots, 20 on target, a 4.47 rating. We had four clear-cut chances, four half chances, 13 long shots. That's a bit high, but, you know, that's, that's where a lot of those were coming from. And it was just absolutely insane. You know, and some of these, some of these from distance were the goals. Like all these X's out here, a couple of them were goals. The Nicola, this one here was blocked. This one here was a little bit off target. Marathi had a goal from here. He had another goal from here. He had his third goal from here. You know, it was just one of those games where you're like, holy cow. You know, and I like the fact it wasn't really out of reach until here. You know, what is up with that? And then we turned around and Skindija beat us 5-1. But this is an acceptable loss because... We're playing Academic at Pandev in the Cup two days later, and I started a team of youngsters, and it showed. You know, I think the oldest player on the squad here was 21, and that was Gajufi. And Skindija is a very good squad, and it was one of those where it's like, you know what, we'd already clinched. We clinched with the Silex game, I want to say. We had already clinched the league. There was no way we were falling out of first place. Skindija is a very good squad. And was like, you know what? Usually in those situations, if there's nothing on the line, like if I was going for like an Invincibles season or something like that, I might try and play some of my starters. But in this case, I didn't have to. You know, we we, we had the cup or we had the, the league in hand and I'm getting the youngsters a little bit of playing time. Now, the fans may not have been happy, but... So the good news is Gusevsky is going on international duty tomorrow. So we, hey, Palace finished in 15th. Good for them. Sorry, distracted there for a minute. Anyhow, back on track. Uh, Gusevsky is on international duty starting tomorrow, so he'll be available for the game today. Vodic is still injured, but Elise's really kind of stepped up. Uh, the offseason is going to be interesting. We're, we're back at that point where the good players that are out there either a don't want to come to the team or they uh well you know what let's see what happens oh, I really mind. he was good for us this season but he wasn't that good Maybe we can try and get him on loan again if we need to. What's up, dude? Okay. Let George out. You know, again, if we go to the scouting, you know, we can knock that down to 16. Maybe we'll get some of the youth players in here. He's 25. He's 22. Barty we're bringing in next season. That's why we don't need um, the guy from Hanover. The one they wanted 120, 525,000 for. 
So we're doing okay, I think. It's going to be a combination. I think it's going to be more our players that we're bringing in through the youth intake than anything else. I mean, if I can go out and I can find youth players from other squads who can bolster the team, that is what I will do. So, I mean, being limited to, to Macedonian players, it's, I knew that going in it was going to be a tough ask simply because the, the talent pool is not as deep as other countries. So, uh, go by ability here. So, I got a Kasevsky in goal. Kasevsky does still, still doesn't want to sign a contract with us, which is really kind of annoying. So, We may have to wait and see what else is out there, or Sasko is going to get a decent amount of starts for us next season. Alexander Oleski is really coming on. It's going to be between him and Ristoff going forward. For the moment, Ristoff has the advantage. But maybe, probably not. Holy cow, I did not realize that. What are their tributes? Oh, Oleski's so much better mentally. Oh, okay. Well, you know what? We'll start Oleski. But we'll put Ristoff on the bench. Vaj on the bench. So we're going to have Gusevsky in goal, Sikarski, Boznovsky, Boznovsky, Jankolov as the defensive back four. Andonovsky at defensive mid behind Maradi and Nikolev. A Boz and Ilyeski as the attacking mids and Vodich up top as the striker. He is still injured, but that is his broken arm. And failing that, we have uh, Elizai on the bench, and he has actually filled in quite nice. That is the evening coffee clutch getting ready to start. So Pandev's a good squad, I believe. Did they finish second again this year? Kusevsky. Vidor heads it down. Dimitrov picks it up. Loses the ball. Ileski back to Kusevsky. Bosnowski back to Kusevsky. Kusevsky again bombs it forward. Borak to Ab oh, Abaz gets the ball. So yeah, this, def this graphical glitch is definitely related to the country add-on because I've been playing my Palace save from early in the year offline and I don't have this graphical glitch and Abaz scores a very nice goal. That can't be our fans. Bozanovsky to Ananovsky to Nikolev. Ilyeski. Nice through pass to a boss. Just put it on his right foot. What a great goal. That was nice. Somebody was fouled. Oh, Matrovsky's going to get it just outside the box. And he hits it high and left. Shankilov picks up the Aaron header, gets it to Andonovsky, back to Bozovinsky, Bozovinsky, ah, Nikolev beats Ilyaski, and a very nice save by Rangel. Abaz, the corner kick, Bozovinsky can't get the head on it. However, Ilyaski's going to come up, get it, Abaz. Oh, gives the ball away, Hazanovich was there, oh, Kristevsky got by the defenders. And he scores the equalize. That was a good counterattack. That was really, really nice. Dimitrov. Kutevsky. Kutevsky breaks out wide, crosses it in, and it's headed over the crossbar by Matrovsky. Jankolov on the throw in. Valeski back to Jankolov, crosses it in. Marati's there, and he heads it over the crossbar. And we go into half, tied, one all. Pandev, six shots, three on target. We have eight and four. They have a slight possession advantage. 60 minutes. 65. 
We'll look at making a couple of changes here. Uh, Andonovsky's gassed, so we'll bring on Misevsky. Ilyevsky's kind of close to getting gassed, but he's young. Abaz. Poznovsky, and he heads over the crossbar. Wrangel. Bombs goal kick forward. Dimitrov heads it forward. Morong's there. 101 with Kosevsky. Kosevsky, a very adequate stop. Morong just didn't put a lot of effort into that. Misevsky loses the ball. Demoski dispossesses him. Stoyanov. Oh, Jankalov dispossesses Stoyanov. Abaz. Holds it up. Back out to Jankalov. Centers it. Misevsky takes a shot off Wrangel's hand and in. That was a wonder goal. Holy cow. Boz, back out to Jankalov, taps on Musevsky, just one shots it in. Wrangle got a hand on it, but it wasn't enough. That'd be from 30 yards. Jankalov. Up to Oleski. Back and forth. Jankalov ends up with it again. Feeds Oleski. Back to Jankalov. Across the field to Marotti. All along pass to Oleski. And he tows it over the keeper for a goal. Was he on sides? He must have been because they didn't blow the play dead. How is he not on how, Okay, he must have been in line with that guy there. That was a really good sequence of passes. Sikarski. To Marathi. To Misevsky. Back to Marathi. Vodich. Nikolev. Oh, he's offsides. He's offsides. And we win. Nice. Our second. Well, we've won the league twice now. We won the second league once. And this is our first cup win. Very, very cool, guys. And I either have the celebrations turned off. Oh, there it goes. Okay, there's the confetti. I was going to say, where's the confetti? There's the confetti. Well done, us. Go to the post match here. To the double cup glory. Yeah, that makes sense because I didn't do anything at Palace. Jenkoloff was very good. He would he, I I overpaid for him. But he's paying me back. So what we're gonna do here is look at the players real quick before they leave. Uh, we'll take the unavailables. We'll bring the unavailables on. If we sort by appearances, Emil Abaz led us with 39 and 4 off the bench. 11 goals, 18 assists, 7 players in the match. He's been a very good pickup for us. Gusevsky started 39 games, had a solid season. Amir Marathi started 36 games, 16 goals, 14 assists. I did not realize that. Only one player of the match, though. Ivan Nikolov, 8 goals, 13 assists, 3 players in the match. Jankalov had six assists and two players in the match. Vodich, 26 goals, two assists, five players in the match. And Anofsky, a solid season. One goal, one assist, one player, two players in the match. From the defensive mid position, mostly. If he wasn't playing defensive mid, he was playing defensive center back. What else we've got here? Bosnovsky, six goals and five players in the match. <laughs> All the goals were off set pieces. Bokovsky, eight goals, four assists, three players in the match. Bosnovsky. In a half season, two goals, five assists. Darko Masevsky, eight goals, three assists, three players in the match. Grozdanowski, six goals, three assists, and limited appearances. Davidovsky, two goals, two assists, and limited appearances. Ilyaski, in 11 games, he had four goals, four assists, and a player of the match. And it's actually more if you take into account we, we just played a cup game. And he had 14 goals in the non-appearances. He had four... Four goals, four goals and four assists in eight appearances. 
So if we sort by goals, we had three players in double digits and one, two, three, four players with eight or more. We sort by assists. We had three players in double digits and spread the wealth out pretty well there. Players the match was a boss. So he had a very, very good season. And then I believe. So the other thing we need to look at is who is going to be leaving. And for the moment, it looks like quite a few players. So from best Fort Arifi on down to Georgi Bozanovsky, every one of those players is leaving, except Alekovsky, Alekovsky, rather. I just offered him a contract, and hopefully he will be signing it. Uh, Satoski has no future here. Um, everyone here has essentially no future, really. They either haven't improved enough, or they're just not good enough to stay on the squad. Um, Kasevsky still doesn't want to sign a contract with us. Groznowski, I, I don't need. Glissik's getting old and he's falling off a cliff. Same with Kasekarski. Arifi is one of those guys who had potential and just never realized it, I think. Um, so we've got some holes we're going to have to fill in. The good news is, at least if we look at it from a potential point of view, and I still have to go in and, and fix the names for the guys that came in this season. We've got some very good players who are, are, are on the rise and can definitely, definitely contribute. So Ilyevsky will probably get starts next season. Uh, Tosevsky might get a few starts as well. I mean, he's already two and a half stars. Garcia Marina has a huge future here if he wants it. I mean, he's already improved that much in training already. Cut this out. So, and it's just going to be, you know, one of those things. If players like um, Trotsky and that don't start improving, you know, I'll try and send him out on loan next year. But his, his, the areas I want him to improve, he either hasn't improved or they haven't improved enough. Um, you know, we'll, we'll move them on. So, and then it's also just going to be a matter of swapping out and, and moving players that just aren't going to have a future here regardless. You know, I mean, I'll keep them, I'll keep some of them just so my under 18s can, can still feel the solid squad. And, you know, having an under 18 squad isn't a bad thing. We're not financially in a place where it's draining us. And honestly, I think with a few pickups, we might actually get a couple of steps further in the Champions League next year. Even Boznowski C, he's an A+. Plus. The winners to qualify for your cup two, we finished first. Our attendance was up to 6,700. Where did Academica finish? Panda, they finished fifth. Their biggest win was the 10 nil against Silex. The match, remember, was the 4 nil against Struga, and the goal of the season was the 4 nil against Struga. That was the one where uh, Masevsky scored from 34 yards out. It was an absolute brilliant shot. Uh, we were up everywhere in revenue, sponsorship, broadcast revenue, corporate and hospitality, competition prize money. We got $1.25 million. That's one of the big reasons we're actually not as deep in the red as we could be our starting 11 that's actually fairly solid that, that's been pretty much the same guys the only one i would probably call cool with would be andonovsky and masevsky there player of the season was emil abaz well deserved young player of the season marati signing of the season Boznovsky. goal of the season was masevsky's goal Bodic had 26 goals abaz had 18 assists and seven players of the match and the highest rating is 7.5 Bodish broke a record for most goals in a season, broke a record for most goals in a match, or tied a record, most goals in a league match. Abaz broke a record for most assists in a season, and Masevsky broke a record for most discipline. And Tosevsky got a start at 15 years and 312 days, and Ilyeski got a uh, goal at 16 years and 234 days. And we, as they are saying, are deservedly champions. Players inducted into the best 11. Baj, Ozanovsky, and Jankalov. 
That's not bad. Very good season for us. Uh, our scoring numbers are huge outliers. We performed really well in terms of attacking. Played in their half of the field most of the game, which is always a good thing. We were really good efficiency-wise. And we just absolutely blew the league out of the water in terms of general performance. I really didn't spend a lot of time on analytics be simply because we were performing so much better than all the other teams in the league. Uh, I can agree with that. Discuss plans for next season. Okay, I can't under-promise and over-deliver here. And my only option was to say that we'll be competitive in the Champions Cup. Well, that's about right. The only real significant injury, at least to a player, to a starter, was Vodic, Vodic, but he broke his arm. And he was still able to play. Sikarski was out for five weeks with damaged knee cartilage, but I don't know that that really affected things in the long run. Can Ristoff play another position? He can play center mid. He can play striker. Kind of, sort of. He can't finish worth a darn, though. He can't tackle or mark, so he's not a good defensive right back. Now, we take a look at the depth chart, and we see who is there and who we can move. So next season, especially with some of the older players clearing out, I don't expect us to be fielding a bunch of four-star guys on the field. It'd be a lot of youth players that have four- and five-star potential. And I'm okay getting them games and getting them playing time. If I can bolster the squad with some nice pickups this offseason that aren't going to cost us a ton of money, I'll do that. But the goal now is to start rotating in those players who are 18 and older to get playing time. Now, normally, players like Ilyeski, even though they're only 16 years old, you want to keep them on the youth squad. But... You know, if they're the best player I have available, it's it's probably wise to at least bring them in, bring them in on a bench roll. So, and I haven't had any new job offers since. Who was it? TSC. TCS. It was in the Serbian league. If this had been a journeyman save, I would have jumped at it because they're they're a they're an interesting squad in an interesting country in an interesting. Division of football. We'll take a look here after this ends. Yeah, TSC offered me the job. They were in the relegation zone, and they got relegated, it looks like. FK TSC Bacitopola. Great youth facilities, great training facilities, good youth recruitment. Not the biggest stadium. Insecure finances, that was another thing. But like I said, had this been a, uh, had this been a journeyman save, I would have jumped at it. The training facilities have been downgraded again. We have got to get those up. So, we are going to end the episode here. I'm not sure where we're going to be training at. I'm not quite sure how long the off season is going to be. If anything is a clue, it was last season when we had Champions League qualifying games in mid July. So, we will come back for those, and I will double-check my microphones next time, too. So a solid season for us, a very good season for us. We didn't run away with it, but we won. Got the double, a very good thing. And now it's probably going to be the first difficult off-season of the save in terms of who we're losing and who we're bringing in. We need, we're, we're, it's going to be interesting because... Let me, pause, let me make sure this doesn't go anywhere real quick, because we're at that point where... The players we're losing were kind of successful to where we are. The players we have to replace them aren't as good. So it's going to be a balancing act. But I think for the foreseeable future, as long as for the next couple of seasons, we can stay top four in the division, we'll be fine. So, that said, if you did like what you've seen and heard, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel for more content, questions, criticism, comments, leave those down below. I will answer those as fast as I can. My name is F. Angelica. I thank you for watching.